Urban, since your quarterbacks are talking to us today, have you, have you been able to sort anything out with that depth chart at all? Do you know who's going to do yet? What will it take to win that job, if that makes sense? What are you Consistency, doing? and then uh, we have a big scrimmage coming up this Saturday, and that's going to be a huge part of it. Are they... Is it just those two? Is Tate in the mix? Is there how tight is that race for that second chance? Well, Tate's in the mix. You know, Tate gives us a, a weapon. Um, you know, he, he has, he's done some really nice things for us. He's still getting a grasp of the offense, and uh, but uh, I'd say the true backup right now is between uh, Joe and uh, Dwayne. Front row, middle, uh, Dave. Urban, who has emerged at right guard, or is it still too early to tell? Uh, too early to tell. Uh, no, it's not too early to tell. But you have. Uh, you still have Malcolm. You have uh, Bowen. We're, even, we're taking a look at right guard. Uh, he's he's been playing pretty good. Uh, you still have Demetrius Knox and Matt Burrell. So, of those guys, is, is one of those guys taking more first team reps than Smokers? Yeah, but I'm not going to get into that now. But yeah, they have, and we're, we're starting to get it solidified. I'll probably give you something this weekend. See how it goes. Front row left, Bill. Urban, you said in the past how it's the Ohio State offense, no matter who the coordinator is, and that Kevin is just here to help enhance things. But I don't know if he's had many quarterbacks who run the way that JT can, maybe like Zach Kustak all the way back in the day. Um, how does your philosophy with running the quarterback and his mesh is, is, is it's been great. You know, he's, uh, he, like you said, the one thing that makes Kevin Will, and really all coaches that are successful, when he had those two great running backs at IU, they, um, both of them are doing well in the NFL, Coleman and uh, the other big guy, Howard, right? Yeah. And uh, he used them, and then when he had uh, the drop back guy and the skill guy, he, he's, he's very good at identifying personnel, and, and he's done very good. Uh, I'm very pleased with where we're at offensively right now. So you don't think just with whatever touch he's able to put on it, it won't affect the way you guys have always used the quarterback run in, in your offense? Well, we, you know, we'd rather not use him as much. That's not an indication things are going well. You know, sometimes you need to do it, but um, that's also a get out of jail free card when things aren't going as well. So right now the receivers are playing at a fairly high level. Um, you know, uh, at times, you know, we, when we use them too much, that's that's when things aren't clicking at other spots. Uh, front row right here, Bill. Uh, Irving, you put a couple guys on scholarship uh, this past weekend. Could you talk about that decision, what they potentially could bring to this team? Yeah, it's one of the uh, great things you get to do as a coach, and I see everybody around the country do kind of crazy things to give them scholarships. And and I just think that's one of the, you know, I, I always tell her, there's things I have to do that I can't stand. And that's when a guy makes a stupid decision or just deal with nonsense. Uh, then the, this is my favorite decision when you see deserving people and the NCAA allows us to do it. And, and uh, we put two, Elijah Goins is, uh, starts on special teams and so does uh, Zach. And it was great and our players loved it. And as far as the quarterbacks go, are you comfortable with their progress? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're playing. That's uh, that unit's playing very strong right now. Front row, far left, Mitch. You got seven uh, fifth-year seniors, uh, all starters, uh, playing uh, elite players. Uh, is that an unusual situation yeah. for you? And uh, how does it benefit the team having that? Yeah, you can't put a price tag on that. And, and I saw that developing uh, throughout the off season and in the off, uh, in the spring practice. And it's unusual. I don't know if we've ever had that. Uh, you'd have to go back some years because we just don't, you know, usually don't redshirt guys with the intent that they'll be here in five years nowadays. And the way in there, sometimes the guys are here because they don't play. These guys are, like you said, we have seven. Yeah, and I don't know off the top of my head, I can't remember who they are, but the ones I'm thinking of, they're, they're our best players. <clears throat> so it's very unusual. Second row left, Ari. Um, Urban, do you have an update on Mike Hill's status um, in terms of how long you can uh, No. Okay, also, um, you guys have recruited every position very well, uh, obviously. But at quarterback, there's only one and usually one in every class. 
how do you guys continue to get quarterbacks committed when there are three or four other four or five star prospects on the roster already? How do you guys keep doing it? Because at a certain point, you would think that you would have to pay the price for having too many good ones, especially because only one's playing. Well, what is the sales pitch when you get into a situation when you've got three or four young guys already on the roster and you're still recruiting a quarterback? You see, what I'm, you see what I'm getting at? No, I, I think I know where you're getting at. I think that's, you know, just to single out the quarterback, how does, why would a corner come here? Because uh, there's a chance guys leave early. There's a chance uh, the template, one of the great templates in college football history was in 2014 when you get your number called. Uh, the Cardell Jones story was a third string quarterback and he's forever, forever uh, pictures all over the walls of the Woody Hayes. So it'd probably be a good question to ask them. The sales pitch is about the same for every position. Come here and, and uh, be part of a great program. Back row left, Matt. Um, at this stage of camp, Coach, I mean, you mentioned you got another scrimmage coming on Saturday, but you're a little more than two weeks out of the opener. What, what's the focus this week? When does it turn more towards Indiana game plan? It started this week. It's called the it's game ready week and situation week. Last week was just play it because we had so many, you know, well, not so many, but we just wanted to get in a routine of just putting the ball down and play it. Now it's situational. We put in two minutes today. Uh, we started to install against uh, Indiana's base offense, base defense, so that's about it. And that's normal. That's, you know, this is our coach told me it was actually, this is actually our it's fourth week of camp. Now he cheats. He counts that one Thursday and Friday as a camp, but still we've been together for a long time and it's time to start getting ready to go play a game. How are the young guys, particularly freshman class, they've had a few have their strikes removed. Yeah, they'll be, they uh, up? there'll be some tonight getting popped tonight. They, uh, they're doing good. They're, they're, this is a really good class. Really good class. And they're going to contribute. Second row, far right, Tony. I'm wondering how the search for playmakers goes. You lose it's going well. Yeah. The last year. Are you in a better place this year, maybe? We're the units the strongest it's been since I think the 14 time, you know, and uh, you know, yeah, you you pull out a talent like Curtis Samuel, but as far as just you know, just guys going and in, in, in very serious approach and the leadership in the rooms the best we've had, and it's back like the Evan Spencer times when he was here and just guys shut their mouth and they go really really hard and and they're making plays all over the field. They're they're very good right now. You always talk to you. Talk about you link your list of ten playmakers or whatever you want to get the ball to. Do you know? Do you have a number? How many you have right now? I have a number. I haven't done it yet, but yeah, that's coming up pretty soon. All right, over here, Rob. Urban, you said that uh, Tate gives you a weapon. It also gives you a bit of celebrity if his Twitter feeds any indication he might have a dozen bears to post. Can you talk about what the weapon part is and the personality of this kid? I mean, it's what brings it out. Well, I think he's a very confident guy. He's a, a guy that's had great success as a player in the bright lights of one of the top high school programs in America. I think he, uh, you know, I just love where he's at right now. I love his mentality. I love the look in his eye. I love the fact that he understands he's got work to do and that's not going to be easy. So um, he's a real competitive guy, real confident guy, and he wants to play so bad. And those are the people you want to be around. What's the weapon? I mean, just that, or well, the the uh, competitiveness and the fact he's he's a good player. You know, he's obviously he's, he's under six feet tall, so you got to be smart in how you do things with him. But he's he's a very good athlete, very quick twitch guy, can throw the ball. So there's a lot of um, he, he's a weapon. You ever have to tell guys to tone it down? I mean, just their personality is so large, or you just let that, who they are? Depends, yeah. I mean, it's, you talk about social media on the field. Oh. Yeah, we, we watch that. I don't watch it, but the Stamper does, and some guys watch it. And, and uh, no, I, I kind of like guys to let it eat on the field and have some fun with it. And final questions, front row, Tim. Yeah, Urban, as you, as you look at JT from where he started camp to now, from where he left off last year, what has been, in your mind, the biggest advancement he's made, even though he's a going to be a fourth-year starter, what have you seen that has brightened your eyes? His, his accuracy and uh, uh, just his energy level right now is incredible. And um, 
you know he's feeding on every you know he's he's providing that energy for everybody he's always done that but it's it's you know i can tell that this is he, he's got complete ownership and everything going on in that offense his relationship with ryan day is incredible and his you know the skill set that or the the thing he's most improved at right now is accuracy mm-hmm. very accurate player right now does he look like a guy it, it appeared last year that he and the receivers weren't necessarily in sync or where do you want to, i mean is his rise part and parcel with the, with the, a more experienced receiver core? What, how does that work? I guess you know? more experienced offensive line, more experienced uh, you know second year running back now. Last year was a lot of firsts, and um, uh, but he has, got a lot, has a lot of confidence in the one offensive line and the group of receivers. There's you know we're too we're not quite too deep, but he's got a lot of confidence in those guys. Great, coach. Thank you. Very Thanks, much. guys. Thank you.